Hello, everybody. Good mo uh, good evening from uh, the Indian Standard Time and good morning to the viewers and listeners from the other side of the world. Uh, so today we have somebody very amazing with us, uh, even though she needs no in uh, introduction, but we still would love to say a few words about her accomplishments. So we have today Laura Toop and uh, she has over, you know, two decades of corporate uh, experience in change and transformation with personality development training. Um, popular uh, um, magazines have featured us like uh, Kintsugi Space, Metro, Times Education Supplement. She's also a TEDx speaker and has co-authored, you know, two lovely books. But most importantly, she's the brain, the heart and the soul between, uh, behind the hashtag Project Me movement. So thank you so much for joining us today for this conversation, Laura. Thank you very much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. So uh, we have our listeners and we just want to uh, let you know right at the beginning that we would be recording this session and it would be available on our YouTube channel for you to go back and listen to it uh, anytime that you want uh, that little extra boost of inspiration. So um, again, once again, thank you so much, Laura, for joining us um, and let's get started. Fabulous. So um, I think we cannot talk to you without mentioning Project Me uh, and, you know, um, I read about it and it's it's so inspiring, you know, uh, the story behind it and then what you want to achieve through it. But for those of uh, our listeners who are not aware of it, can you tell us a little bit about what made you start this movement and how do you plan to, uh, you know, revolutionize people who are joining this movement through uh, through it, through uh, Project Me? Sure, I, I get Project Me ultimately came about through the spectacular implosion of my life, what now was almost nine years ago when I went from having everything to having literally nothing. And within the space of six to eight weeks, I lost my husband to pancreatic cancer. I lost then my own health and then subsequently lost my career. So as I say, I went from having everything to having nothing. Indeed, as the story goes, and for those who've not heard the story, it was my then four-year-old nephew who that Christmas said to me, Auntie Lollipops, which is what they all call me. Now that Uncle Chris is dead, you have nothing, he said. So needless to say, Auntie was feeling a bit fresh and very raw. And, but he said it was okay. He was going to look after me for 100 days. However, I was 41 at the time and I'd been thrown into a world I didn't recognize, I had no map for, and I certainly hadn't asked for. And so I very much did feel like I had nothing. The challenge was, was that the world around me was continually working harder, doing busy, you know, I, I was stuck and I, and I describe it as stuck in a parallel universe, wading through treacle. And it was totally alien to me. And for me, I tired of the platitudes from other people whereby um, people kept saying to me, oh, just do this, just do that. Um, and my mother's classic, just go back to ballet. Uh, ballet was not going to save my life, needless to say. So there I was. I, I ultimately ended up flying 5,000 miles to, to sit on a beautiful island and reconfigure my life. And ultimately, it was in that, on that beautiful island that I realized that, you know, I did have something. I had myself. And, and my ability to business plan, having spent 20 odd years managing and doing business change and transformation. And that actually I was not nothing. And that that was a very good place to start. And so what then went forward was 
you know I, I created a plan and project me was born on that beach 5,000 miles away which you know for you guys probably was 10,000 miles away if you were in India um, but from there that project me enabled me to you know what seems like a short distance move 90 miles around the m25 which is a long way in the uk to a town i didn't know buy a house and renovate it into a home make new friendships retrain requalified which is where you find me today ultimately enabling others to navigate life's unexpected challenges so that they can themselves lead a life you know without compromise despite what happens yeah. in life and so I guess my my mission if you call it that is that there is a project me in all of us and we don't have to be defined by life's shall we call them lemons or in my case, the whole orchard of lemons that came my way. In fact, you know, we can actually use it to our advantage and we can create a life by design rather than ruled by disaster. And so for me, that is, that is the mission. Um, and, you know, ensuring that everybody realizes that there is a project me within them, that through clarity, they can gain resilience and take steps forward in a world in which they wish to belong in. Um, Laura, I, I think I resonate with you at, at a lot of uh, levels because I myself, uh, you know, I'm still going through a uh, health issue. So um, there was a time when, you know, doctors were telling me that, you know, your chances are very less of surviving, but I never gave up. Like I did give, give up and it's, it's very difficult when you have to, uh, you know, balance between that uh, self-doubt and that loss that feeling of loss where you know you feel that um, there's nothing more and I've lost everything and to come back and I think um, you're right project me actually will help uh, like I, I did not learn about Project Me until, you know, we started researching about you and, you know, learning about you. And, uh, you know, then then that's when I came across Project Me and I was like, oh, I wish I had this, you know, two years back when I was at my lowest and yeah. probably um, I could have survived it better or dealt with my issues better. So um, I think, yes, it, it's and very inspiring. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, so, uh, and, and I think it gets overwhelming because I think you have uh, dealt with it much better than me, but for me, it, it is, it is still very overwhelming to, you know, openly acknowledge it, to talk about it, uh, but really hats off, uh, for, you know, creating a platform, uh, where, you know, these issues are, uh, discussed. No, without a doubt. I think, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, don't get me wrong. You know, I yeah. still have days when I am navigating a space that creates overwhelm for me. And I think we, we find this any time we're navigating something that we haven't dealt with before. Yeah. And of course, we enter a situation that we haven't dealt with before and instantly, you know, all, all of our previous experiences then cloud, you know, our, our immediate acknowledgement of where we're at right now. Yeah. So it is a little surprise that, you know, every time we come across a new situation, we, we will experience a level of overwhelm. I think what Project Me has enabled me and others to do is actually the beauty in its in, in its simplicity yeah. is in overwhelm we don't need any more complication what we need is something that is quite simple that we can draw on so that we can ground ourselves in that moment yeah and and so for me that is what project me does through literally <laughs> three a's and six baseline questions and the three a's are you know acknowledge where you're at mm. and and what you're feeling that that is the most important step of anything yeah. and yet we go straight into doing um and i look i i also you make a really good point about you know i might have navigated it better had i had project me 
yeah. I, I guess the thing I want to particularly highlight is look, <laughs> this is this took me 40 odd years to to get to this point because I didn't navigate well my earlier experiences when this happened. Yeah. My life imploding nine years yeah. ago wasn't the first time my life had imploded with a with a curveball. Um, and actually, when I go back to, I was 13 and I had a water skiing accident. Mm. And I, I ultimately didn't know how to deal with social isolation because this was going back before... Um, mobile phones before the internet yeah. so going back to a world where you know if I wasn't in school I was socially isolated from my friends I had a mother who was desperately concerned so massively overprotective and consultants couldn't see the problem and so the problem with that was I didn't know how to deal with the situation I found myself in so I controlled the only thing I knew how to control, and that was something outside of me, and that was food. So I just stopped eating. Um, so lo and behold, I then had a severe eating disorder, which then took much longer to deal with than the actual problem itself, which I did have bilateral hip and back surgery at 15. Um, but by then, I, I'd found an unhelpful coping strategy in food so my, my project me pathway came about because I knew that returning to those unhelpful methods yeah they're not yeah. sustainable they become a bigger problem yeah. than the original problem so do do I say that you navigated it any worse or better than, than I, I, I dare I say I probably just had maybe a few more lemons earlier on in my life where I didn't navigate it very well at all because, you know, I did eventually get over the eating disorder, not before being told I wouldn't make 30, mm -hmm. but I then just replaced it by working harder and doing more. Yeah. And that, that didn't work either, um, which is why I say the acknowledgement is so important. Yeah. Because that's what I didn't do in those steps, and that's my observation, and that's why Project Me spends time there acknowledging it, but doesn't stay there because otherwise you get stuck in overwhelm. Yeah, I mean you are you're bang on when you say that acknowledgement is important because I think when you're when you're right in in that uh, you know in that lemon orchard of in the middle of that pickle you don't really understand that you know you are actually uh, picking up some more uh, you know uh, bad habits or unhealthy habits which are worse than the actual problem so um, and you said that you know you uh, you didn't always have it figured out and it has been a journey of learning relearning uh, making mistakes and then again you know uh, learning from them and that's uh you know the culmination of all your experiences is project me so uh one thing that we i, I would want to ask you is how do you navigate these moments of self-doubt like we uh, i mean i'm always self-doubting myself um uh, like you know all of us have these moments of self-doubt uh, in our day-to-day -day life whether it is at work uh, or maintaining a relationship or even you know pursuing a hobby you know most of the time I think oh I'm not good enough for it or I don't have yeah. time for it so how, how do how how can we navigate this and you know be better at it I, I think there are many many things um, I think one of the things goes back to you know my you know, the comment about acknowledgement and the comment about three A's and six baseline questions. Mm. The self-doubt often steps in because the gap between where we are and where we want to be is huge. And we don't know how we're going to navigate that gap. And therefore, because there are so many unknowns in that gap, mm. we then kind of go into this place of, that's just too huge. I'm doubting that I'm ever going to be able to do that. Yeah. So in order to be able to start tackling that self-doubt, it's about bridging that gap. And how do you make, take steps to make that gap not so seem so big and such a void? Hence, I mentioned the three A's and six baseline questions, because what that does is begin to 
narrow that gap to make it more bridgeable. That's such a word. Um, so what are the three A's? I've oh, already mentioned acknowledge. Um, and then it's about taking action. And then it's about attainment. And within that, you've got six questions. So what you first start with is, it's a very factual one. Where am I? You know, I mean, so I'm sat in my office in the UK right now talking to yourself. Very factual. Yeah. How am I feeling? It feels very strange to talk to my laptop knowing I have an audience. <laughs> but I'm feeling okay and comfortable. Um, and so that's me acknowledging where I am, how, how I'm feeling, or perhaps what I am noticing, which is, you know, it might be a behavior that you particularly notice that's getting, you know, making you feel apprehensive, perhaps. Yeah. And then you start moving into, okay, so what am I going to do about it? Um, you know, what do I want to feel? Well, I want to feel calm. So what actions can I take that will make me feel calm? And in which point we're starting to narrow this gap from where we are to where we want to be. Thus, the self-doubt begins to feel less. I guess that, that's English. Yeah. Then what we know, and this is the important part here, is we know we can't do all of this necessarily on our own we can do a very vast part of it but that's where the attainment comes and that's really recognizing you know what is going to stop us and what is going to allow that self-doubt to really take hold of you know where we're at and how we're feeling and and derail us I guess yeah. and that's where we said to us okay, well what will stop me well okay so what will stop me it might be something very practical but it also be you know the voice in my head so therefore what what support can i get that will enable me to stop you know, the critical voice well it could be that i consider a situation where i've done something new before what did i do in that situation how can i utilize that maybe it's getting the advice and support of a mentor or a guide or somebody as I call them torchbearers those who've been there before and and done it as it were just in the same way you were saying to me had two years ago I had uh, knew about project me then wow that what a difference that would make that that's I've been a torchbearer to you if I'd been with you two years ago as it were yeah but in this way yeah. we're slowly kind of making the unknowns more known that enables us that seed of self-doubt to become to be tackled. I think as part of the acknowledgement phase, the other important thing is to really recognize what's really going on. What is the self-doubt really about? Yeah. Um, is it about, you know, is it the critical voice that just says I can't do this because the gap's too big? Mm -hmm. Or is it because actually this is out of alignment with, with what feels true to me? And that's something else within the Project Me framework that I focus on quite a lot because what I've recognised in and of myself and that within clients is how many people push on through, you know, through the, the self-doubt, but actually it's, it's not self-doubt because actually what we're pushing on through to the other side to get is out of alignment with actually what it is that we truly want for ourselves and, and therefore what that actually does is fuels the self-doubt um let me give you an example which might help so i in my infinite wisdom decided that i would follow my parents advice when i headed out into the working world and they wanted, you know, they suggested I became an accountant. Mm -hmm. Now, nothing against accountants. Mm -hmm. However, for those who know me very well, I am most definitely not an accountant. And, um, but I pushed hard. And all that did was erode my, my self-confidence. And it fueled my self-doubt. Because I was totally and utterly out of alignment mm -hmm. with what, was true to me and what I wanted out of my life, 
which is why I, I spend a lot of time with people on the acknowledging what it is that they truly want and understanding what I call their brand me, and uh, which is who are you? What matters most to you and what do you want to feel? Yeah. Because acknowledging yeah. those things is a huge step towards building one's self-confidence and tackling self-doubt. I think uh, I think this uh, this has been beautifully put because most of us, you know, those who are dealing with any kind of an issue, a mental health issue, a physical health issue, that acknowledgement is is the most difficult part because you know somewhere accepting it even to ourselves is sometimes. Um, very difficult but once like as you mentioned that once you start acknowledging it it gets better like you are you know then trying to build back your life or you know get out of that uh, problem whichever small big monumental whatever it is you're trying to get out of it um and then you you just mentioned that you know it feels a little strange you know talking to us uh screen like you know there is somebody on the other side of it, but we are eventually talking to a screen so in a world that is filled with you know tech and social media and uh, where in a click we can just you know look up like even if we take a platform like LinkedIn we constantly can see you know how somebody else is doing and maybe their um, like situations in life is very different uh, from us but we don't know it we are just saying oh they have a better job uh, they have got yeah. a better award or you know something or the other so uh, how how do we stay true to ourselves and maintain that you know, self-confidence in what we have to offer in such a situation uh, the, the million dollar question <laughs> um, uh, well, there we go. So I guess for me, I would, you know, I ultimately will say to you, it is about being grounded in ourselves and really knowing ourselves well. And I say that because the thing is, is if we, if we start to, so let me, let me try and explain it in a different way. But Imagine we're sitting in a boat on the high seas and we're trying to keep ourselves stable on that, you know, in that boat. And we, we then hook ourselves onto, you know, the friends and family boat. We hook ourselves onto the, um, the, the organization that's telling us that this is the best thing boat. You know, we've hooked ourselves onto a series of boats, which is what everybody else looks and sounds like yeah and we're there on our boat trying to base ourselves on you know an element of all of these things it's a rocky ride <laughs> let's just face it you know we're going to feel a bit seasick yeah the only way that changes is when we you know and i'm sure the purists out there will tell me we well, wouldn't put anchor down when it's in in a, you know, a high seas but bear with me for the analogy but you would put the anchor down because the anchor down is ultimately yourself your strength in this moment and and that that strength comes from you knowing yourself extremely well what your skills are what you love doing yeah. and how to optimize those. because that means then when you look out into the world and see you know that so and so is doing something amazingly what you're looking at is ultimately going Okay, well, I can learn from the bits for that person that I need for myself because maybe I do have a skill deficit in something or I do want to learn to be a particular way. But actually, I can't replicate what that person is doing because you know, their resources are different for me, their life experiences are different, what they have available to them is completely yeah. different to mine. But only in being truly understanding our brand me can we ground ourselves in that knowledge. When we start to instantly go to look out of ourselves, we will get drawn into whatever story and we will try to, as I say, belong in somebody else's skin, which unsurprisingly feels uncomfortable. Yeah. We need to learn to belong in our yeah. own skin and get comfortable with that if we want to have true self-confidence and tackle our self-doubt. 
I, I'm I'm going to I'm going to really start you know applying uh, this because I think whatever you're saying today has been really it's it's very inspirational and you are a role model for a lot of people. But Laura, who's a role model for I think um, thousands of people, hundreds and thousands of people out there, who is your role model? Who do you look up to for inspiration? I've had several people in my life. Um, and I'm going to put them into to sort of a couple of categories and, and it reflects back on what I've just said. So one of probably my biggest um, role models, she sadly is no longer with us, was a lady called Marion, who um, I worked for as her living carer, age 17. She was paralyzed from the neck downwards with multiple sclerosis. Oh my God. But this was a woman who was incredibly capable. This was a woman who, despite the fact that she was paralyzed from the neck downwards and very limited in what she could do, even her speech was impacted by the, the multiple sclerosis. She, by the time I worked with her, she was already 32 years into her journey with multiple sclerosis and lived a further 15 afterwards. But she'd written four books. She still lived a life fully. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for mm -hmm. me, she is the epitome of navigating life despite what it chooses to throw at us. So she is what saw me really, really turn the corner with my eating disorder. So I, I share with you, Marion, but I also share with you, you know, we all know Brené Brown, but there are, there are others out there who, you know, I have taken for because they have been what I call light leaders. Those, those people whose skills, values, I want to enhance of my own. Um, and one of those was Brené Brown because I wanted to truly embrace all of me and realize that in embracing all of me, this was the most powerful thing that I could give to myself and give to the world as a result. Yeah. So, you know, I, I would say to people, look towards the, those light leaders. You know, I've already mentioned the torchbearers, but also look to the light leaders yeah. in your life who, all, all the skills that you want to, to learn from and to go out and find those people and follow them and watch them because that is, that is how you build your 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 inner self confidence and tackle that doubt yeah i mean um, of course like you know when you when you hear a story uh, like that you feel that or if she could, you know, still make uh, so much out of her life, if she could still live her life to the fullest, as you mentioned, then, you know, uh, we can at least try to do it. So, um, you know, uh, in a in a very yes first culture, like we are, we are always trying to be ahead and we're always saying yes, uh, not just to ourselves, but to people. So is it OK to say no? And how do you firmly say no just for your self-preservation? Uh, yes, two letters, N-O, yet they're the hardest to say. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think it's, you know, there is a beautiful analogy that says the heart must beat first before it can supply blood and oxygen to the, its vital organs. And that is true in life. I, we are the heart and others are the vital organs. And, and we mustn't forget that. And I think that you know, when we're saying no, actually we become stronger in ourselves to support others. Because if we're running on half empty whilst we're trying to serve others, we are not doing anybody a great service. Correct. Not just ourselves, but everybody else. And I know that in saying no, which ultimately means saying yes to me, yeah. I have been stronger in my ability to help others. And I, and I tell you why that comes about is because whether we realise it or not, if we are not being true to our needs, 
we will feel something, whether that is because we might fly off the handle and get cross with somebody, whether we choose to um, go and eat, smoke, whatever it is that you know we choose to do. Invariably, that is comes about because of a need that is within us that is not being fulfilled. Yeah. And if that need is not fulfilled, going out and helping another person, we're doing it on very, very shaky ground. A tree doesn't grow if it doesn't have strong roots. That's the best way to describe it. <laughs> so imagine a tree with no roots. It can't do very much. Um, so we're building our roots so that the tree can be stronger. And for me, that has enabled me to be stronger in, in the way I help with those around me. Um, and trust me, I, I have a very complex family environment um, that means because I am on my own, um, it is very easy for me to be drawn into my sister's four kids' lives yeah. um, or you know, my mother's ill health. And, you know, but I have to say that in knowing myself, in what I want for me, so intimately my brand me, I am stronger to be able to support them from that base yeah. than I am if I go first and foremost to help them. Yeah, I mean, uh, coming from India, we understand all about, you know, complex uh, family dynamics and uh, how uh, you know, the thing is intertwined. So, um, you, I, I mean, I have never heard anybody say that, you know, I have been there the longest with myself. So people have always, uh, you know, have different versions to this uh, answer. But I think this uh, hits home. So um, we'll just open the floor uh, for question. And Chris Berry has been wanting to ask, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for a long time. So we'll just let him in and uh, allow him to ask a question. Uh, Chris, can you uh, unmute yourself? Well, good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today on Marvelous Monday? <laughs> we are good, Chris. Thank you for joining. Uh, please ask your question to Laura. Well, Laura, it is great to see you today on Marvelous Monday. Your story today about self-confidence is truly inspiring nonetheless. And I, I really want to ask you this. Laura, and you probably may mention it just a little bit on right now, just uh, dropping off my wife at work. Let me ask you this. When it gets to the point of knowing who you are, is it also going through all the things that you all have to go through, whether to be those trials and tribulations and just letting things be for what they are? Do you just take life as it is versus life happening to you? Absolutely. I I think what it enables me to do is be very much stronger in the moment and make priority prior if I can say the word prioritize my choices um, far better, which enables me to go with the flow. Um, so let, let me give you an example, Chris, um, and for everyone listening. Now again, this is a story I have shared before. But as, as, as with a lot of things in my life, um, my house renovation project didn't exactly go to plan. And it certainly reminded me that perfection doesn't exist. So just to the point that my house had been completely and utterly gutted, um, and I am standing in the entrance hall looking up three floors up to my loft, through floorboards, my builder says to me, I'm very sorry, Laura, but I can't carry on the job because I am bankrupt. So you can imagine I'm now standing in what was my home and I'm thinking, you know, most people's responses would be anger, um, create a lot of stress. However, I wasn't either of those things because what to me was most important were two things. One was communication is very important to me. My builder had come to me and openly and honestly told me where he was. He hadn't run away. He hadn't hidden. He hadn't done anything else. But he came to me 
however hard that must have been, but he came to me and told what had happened. And I also knew that my end vision, my, my house that was going to be, you know, a calm oasis away from the business of the outside world filled with fun family, friends and flowers, that, that could still happen. What needed to change was the how. Um, and yeah, I had to find a different how, but actually in that moment, I wasn't stressed, I wasn't angry, I didn't shout and scream. Um, I went with what was presented and I just found a different how. And so as I talk to everybody today, I am sat in my house and don't worry, I'm not sitting in the ground floor. <laughs> I am actually on the first floor, not that you can see that, but I do actually have floorboards. Um, I do have a back wall to my house, which I didn't have at that point. Um, and it does, you know, in knowing ourselves and what matters most to us in any one moment, that allows you to, to actually ignore some of the things that don't matter. Um, so, you know, to, to use your phrase, Chris, to go with the flow better. Absolutely. And when you think about it, ladies and gentlemen, getting to that point of knowing who you are and understanding and recognizing the gifts that has been given to you is going to be one of the greatest moments in our lives. And once we really accept ourselves for who we really are, because if we don't accept ourselves, then how can we accept confidence? How can we accept awareness? How can we uh, accept understanding if we really don't understand ourselves to the degree of knowing, again, what can we do versus what we can't. And see, I truly believe everything happens for a reason. And when we understand those reasons, maybe to a, a little bit of a degree, we won't be able to know it all, so to speak. But once we know a little bit about maybe everything, we don't need to know everything, maybe that creates a pathway not only to clarity, a pathway to understanding, a pathway to greatness, and maybe even a pathway to others and to connect with us on a deep and meaningful human level and say, hey, maybe you don't have to go through what I went through because this is what I have done. This is what I've seen and everything like that. And you share that with the world because the very act of giving is the very act of receiving. And then, then when you do that on a consistent basis, ladies and gentlemen, and you give to give, not to give to get, but you do that intentionally and you do that from a place of flow and you do that from a place of alignment and agreement. Not only will your confidence be built up, but also other people's confidence will be built up. And it's not about the doubting to a certain degree. It's about allowing the power of what if to come into play. What if this could be done? What if that could be done? And like you said earlier, Miss Dolly, about saying no. Maybe we just don't say it no as a no, so to speak. We say, hey, I'll take the power of the pause today and say this is not good for maybe me right now, but it might be for me tomorrow. And when we allow that to enter our lives, then it's really going to be truly the most pivotal moments that we will have because you know what? We just allow that to occur. Thank you, Chris, for uh, for the question. And um, I think you muted yourself. So we'll uh, open the floor uh, for somebody else to ask a question. Um, anybody else has a question for Laura? Is there anybody else who would uh, take this opportunity to ask a question? Okay, I think we we don't have any uh, questions right now. So, uh, Laura, you you speak about uh, you know having a voice, raising a voice, and we are on a platform that is called the Voice of Woman. So, any final uh, words mm -hmm. before we wrap up this session? I I think it's really there is a voice within all of us, and don't let that voice be hidden away. For years, I, you know, hid my voice because I learned to be afraid of the world rather than to understand it. And in, in our understanding, we gain our self-confidence and we gain, you know, are able to tackle our self-doubt. Self 
but it starts with us. And I think that is, is the greatest thing that I um, acknowledge. And don't lose your voice in the melee because everyone's voice is unique and exceptionally powerful. Exactly. So uh, it's it's very important uh, to you know bring forward your own story because nobody else is going to do it. And I think you have uh, you know set up an exemplary example of you know how to do uh, do it the right way. And I think we're all going back with some uh, you know uh, valuable insights of of you know what you taught us what uh, what we discussed today. And even if we can you know implement uh, even half of that. Uh, I think at least I can speak for myself that um, I'll be on a better path, at least on a more positive path. So uh, thank you, Laura, for being my torchbearer and uh, for, I think for um, you know, millions of others uh, who have you know, had the opportunity to avail uh, you know, or come under your guidance. Uh, so thank you from all of us at The Voice of Woman. And uh, we thank wish you all the best for all your future endeavors. And I hope uh, you know, you're touching more lives and changing more lives with your Project Me uh, initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, too. Uh, and for all our listeners, you can join our Slack community. The link is um, added, uh, you know, to our um, comment box uh, to get more such uh, insights and to stay updated with all the latest news. So until next time, this is uh, me, Pratigya, signing off from the Voice of Women platform. See you next time. Thank you.